Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. And unexpectedly, I've decided, since I've got my camera in hand, to just do a little nature walk today. And the kingbirds have been all over here and they're up in the palm tree right now. They've been singing and singing. The only noise I hear this morning are the planes overhead and all the different birds. So I thought I'd do a nature walk. And that's it, no garden, just a nature walk. Though this is my front garden and I'm doing changes and this is my table. I've been working on my ginger and turmeric. But it's just so pretty this morning. I have seen all kinds of birds. I hear the, the woodpeckers. Listen, the scrub jays, isn't that beautiful? It's been a quiet morning. Usually I get up, even on the weekends. Leaf blowers and everything going, but not this morning. Very quiet. So I thought, I'm gonna grab my camera and just do a walk. As you can see, and I hope you can see, I've got scrub jays coming through my garden and all kinds of other small types of birds. Goldfinches, you can hear them singing. That beautiful little song you hear? Those are goldfinches. They're coming in to take a bath. They feed in the garden, but they won't feed out of the bowls we put out with seed. Oh, look. And the tree across the hill is full of birds. I just saw a whole bunch fly in there. Isn't this beautiful? It's quiet. But I don't want to bore you to death, so I just want to kind of walk through. So what do we do? Well, there's a toey down there running around. We worked with the school and we were chaperones on a hiking trip, which was really, really nice in a reserve. And mm, though it's beautiful and nice and they're fixing it up, I personally was a little disappointed. I was a little upset to hear that in order for them to clear the hills, they use herbicides and they get rid of a lot. See that goldfinch in the fountain? He's taking a bath right in front of me. Literally five feet in front of me. And that, yeah, that's another goldfinch up there. Yes, they explained how they clear the hills. At least that's what our guy told us. So I'll just take his word for it. And they spray the hills, they kill everything. They wait and then they're planting. What they're trying to plant is native plants. But then they said the weeds keep coming in after everything, you know, is died back and changes. And so they're fighting with that. I don't know. You know, I don't want to be the one to step up and tell people what to do. So I just listen. Everybody's got their own way. And if that's what they feel they've got to do in their habitat, then, you know, they got to do that. We don't use any herbicides. We don't use any pesticides. But then, you know, everybody does it their own way. I enjoy nature. Yes, if there's something I don't want birds or animals to get into, I'll tool it. I'll figure out a different way. They can have some. And there are certain things, of course, that I'm not going to let them have. So we went on a hiking trip. And that was quite nice. I, we went with my granddaughter and her school. They're always looking for chaperones. And so that's something we do every year, all the time different functions with the school when they need a chaperone. What else? I've been working in the garden and kind of analyzing what I want to do. I want to clean up this area over here where I feed the birds. I'm hoping to make it look a little nicer for me. So I'm going to clean this up. And these are some of these feeders I make. And oh, they work really, really, really good. And of water fountains and water features, which I absolutely love, which is brought in over 50 variety of birds. I put a video up, I'll keep walking. I put a video up on 50 birds in our garden and I labeled them the best that I could. Uh, there was one I wasn't sure what it was so I put it down as unidentified because we have so many, but that was only, I'm gonna say the sweet songbirds, nice birds that people like, sparrows, no bird of prey really nothing like that. The only thing I did put in is a raven who had come down after a birthday party and found a piece of cake in the wood chips that one of the kids had dropped here from my granddaughter's party. 
And I thought that was adorable. He was trying to tuck it up in the palm tree. And that was last year. Look, still have tomatoes growing and stuff. Let's take a walk through here. So all in all, we're still in January. So it's still a little early to think about, you know, or I should say start planting, because I don't know what spring is going to bring us. Let's walk over here for a minute. Hopefully I won't fall down the hill. Look at that. I have been picking so many tangerines or mandarins, and I can't make a dent in that tree. And it's not just ours. I was at my neighbor's house last week, and she's got the same thing, and hundreds and hundreds of oranges. And hers were uh, seedless oranges. And she just wants to throw them away. Nobody wants them. And I said to her, you know, I peeled one. I ate one while I was there. I'll keep walking. Isn't that gorgeous? I said, there is an easy way to do it. I know it's a pain when you have to juice them, and she doesn't have a juicer, and I don't have a juicer either. I told her, just peel them. That's rosemary. Peel them, and that's it. Don't seed them. I don't seed mine. And throw them in a blender with a little water. And boy, is that good. You just put it through a big strainer, a strainer with big holes. Not fine holes, big holes. Oh, my rosemary is flowering. Isn't that beautiful? Purple flowers. And then you just strain it with a, a large hold strainer, not a fine one. It's so good. Gary loves it, and it's so easy. You know, if you're going to sit down and watch a YouTube video, just peel some oranges and throw them in a blender. That's kind of a lazy way of doing it. You don't need anything fancy, just a plain old blender. So that's worked out really good. But I am analyzing what I want to do in the garden, and so is Gary. And there I think I'm going, and I can always change my mind, so don't hold me to it. That is a very warm wall, so I'm planning on doing a lot of peppers through there. I'm going to continue with the zucchini. I still have squash growing there and the eggplant. In different parts of my yard, I want to grow other things, but I definitely want to get more peppers growing. And then I want to get more trees through here. Isn't that beautiful? I know you may not be able to catch it all, but their birds are just flying around, just flying everywhere. And I just love listening to the birds singing and flying. I think there's a ficus tree back here. I'm not sure. It could be an olive tree. Well, there is an olive tree and a ficus tree. Some of them are throwing berries, and they've been bringing through such beautiful birds. And I really don't have a whole lot of time to sit out here, but I have been really keeping my eyes open on that. here. all kinds of birds. So that's it. I have been starting some seeds in my kitchen window, and they're coming up. I started with some basil. So I've got basil growing in my kitchen window and just a flower pot. That's an idea if anybody wants to do it. Just start getting some seeds you want, you know, that you're going to plant in the spring out, early summer, whenever you're going to plant. And simply just start getting them in your kitchen window. And then you can move them when you want. I'm trying to figure out, oh, look at that, a mushroom, just a plain old mushroom, not edible, coming up in the wood chips. Isn't that cool? See, all these wood chips that Gary laid down here years ago now, can you imagine the soil underneath is just breaking down and it's just beautiful? I can't even believe those apple seeds that grew on my deck. I just came out here, dug a hole, dropped them in. The flower pots that they're planted in have no bottoms. I wanted to make sure they got water. They never went dormant so far, and we are in winter right now, and they're still growing. I really expected them to die. But I thought, you know, I didn't want to compost them. I'll give them a fighting chance. Whatever happens, happens. And they lived. But now I'm just thinking about what I want to do with the garden, things I want to do, what things I want to plant. We're getting a lot of weeds the, because we've had rain. That's one thing this year. We've had a lot of rain. It hasn't rained for a few days, but we did have a rain one day. Oh, I see some glass. I saw it. There it is. I just want to pick up. Anytime I see glass, I have a pocket and I put it in my pocket and then take it out up and throw it in the garbage. That goes out in the garbage. So, uh... We have had rain, like I said the other day, we had some rain and kind of only here and there, it wasn't really heavy, but we did get rain, which is causing a lot of weeds to grow, a lot of seeds, and that's what they were actually, I don't want to use the word complaining, but that's what they were saying. They're trying to renovate this nature walk area, and they went through and they herbicide everything and killed everything off, and now they said weeds are growing. They're fighting the weeds. I personally think they should put trees. 
They have no trees. We have a thought on that. So there may be a reason why they don't want to put trees. And so I don't know. But they don't, they're not planting trees. They're planting like low shrubs. Like I said, everybody's got their own thing. I don't tell people what to do. Everybody's got to do what works for them. Look at all the weeds coming up because of the rain. Oh, we're coming by Gary's Bees. So that's been it. So it's been working in the garden and, and I've been working and getting my ginger out and my turmeric I've got to still get out and getting ready to replant that. Let's see what Gary's Bees are doing. It's quite cold this morning. No, they're moving around. Let's see if we can zoom in and take a look at them. Now, I'm not sure what they're collecting, but they've got all, some of them have a lot of bright yellow on them. And I'm not sure there might be some mustard flowers around. They might be collecting that, but they're working. So I'm gonna keep walking and stay out of their way. Here is the clay. There's really no wood chips here to speak of, just stuff that's kind of got spread around. So very little grows here. And those are, I've talked about this. This is seed matter, some of it. And what they're doing, the squirrels, is they go in there in my bowls, not my squirrel-proof ones. They can't get into my squirrel-proof bird feeders. But in the bowls, they go in there, which is right up there, come down the hill, and they're burying the seeds in holes, like for the winter. But of course, the seeds are growing. And then they come back and they dig all these holes. Let me swing around here and show you. See what they do? Now, some of these could be skunks. They could be possums, there could be different things digging and looking for grubs. But they also dig holes and they bury the seeds. They fill their pouches up and then they bury some of the seeds so that, like they're going to go back and find it before it grows. Well, it's growing, but you know, they can eat sprouted seed too. So now we're in the back of my garden and we're starting to head towards Gary's. So all in all, that's what we're doing. We're starting to think about what we want to do. I'd like to tidy up my garden a little bit. I'm already pulling out plants composting it back in and starting to dump a lot of the kitchen scraps into areas where I know I'm going to plant tomatoes or peppers or squash because those are very heavy feeders. If I feed too much, this is my bucket. That's where my bucket went. It must have rolled down the hill. If I heavily feed lettuce or carrots and radishes and stuff I end up with beautiful growth but that's it so I've got to remember not to heavily feed any of the root plants like that or the beets because then I end up with all this top growth with very very little I'm just going to put this over here for now very little undergrowth so I want to get more carrots and different things like that growing but this is the back and then we've got honeysuckle you know some people have asked you don't have flowers oh if we have flowers we have lots of flowers. We've got honeysuckle around the property, and of course we've got a lot of citrus trees, and we've got all kinds of different flowers growing. I've got some four o'clocks up there, which are pink, and they're growing. And so, you know, that's for the hummingbirds, and they come through and they really do work those flowers. But of course, we're feeding now thousands. As I stand here, oh, this is so cool. I see warblers coming in. I see towhees. I see goldfinches. There's all kinds of birds coming in. There's a scrub jay in the bowl right now. Do you see the back side of the garden? Oh, that one's in the feeder I make. Let's zoom in. Yeah, that green feeder I made that the scrub jay's in, the squirrels can't get in there. They can't climb that skinny little pole. Now, if you put it too close to other plants, they may be able to leap into it, but as far as climbing, they're not that skilled or they don't want to try. They're not sure what's on top. But the bowl that's sitting on a stump, yes, the squirrels will go into that, of course, because they just have to go up the big tree stump and go in. So I don't mind a little bit the squirrels getting, but I really don't want to be feeding squirrels all the time. Let them go find their own stuff. I'm listening to bush tits are coming in. They have that little twirl. Those are bush tits. The song is the goldfinches. And then that little, little twirl to it. It's so 
pretty. Those are bush tits and they travel in bunches. There could be dozens and dozens of them. They'll all come in and take a bath at the same time. They don't feed out of any of the seed bowls because they're really insect eaters. So they're going in there and looking for all the tiny little insects in my garden, which is terrific. They don't get them all, but they keep coming back looking. So that's what counts. Listen to that. All I hear is planes and birds today. Sometimes I come out here and do a video and you know, I'm out of the city. I'm not sitting in the middle. I'm, you know, up I, away from the city. And yet there's so much noise pollution. I can't get over that. I'm looking at all the different birds up there. I'm just amazed of all the birds singing and all the different birds that are looking for insects right now in the back of my garden. I can see from down here. They're going into the garden and looking for insects. Yeah, I'll come out here and do a video. I've got trash trucks and there's semis coming through here. And when I say semis, the trash trucks and just there's so much noise pollution. Neighbors street racing. It's like, oh, come on, give me five minutes, people. But today it's just really nothing. I don't even hear people. I don't hear anything. All I hear are birds and planes. Let's look down here. Isn't this beautiful? This is kind of a natural runoff. If we get a lot of rain, the water will come down here and we've got, you know, it stays damp. We've got all kinds of plants growing down there. Kind of like a V cut between the hills. It's gorgeous. You don't plant or anything down here, but it's just natural for anything that wants to come down here. Of course, I've never had a camera in hand when we've seen the bobcat walking through here. So they hide out through here. But of course the coyotes will come through here too because they've got a lot of shelter. We've got loquats growing. They're flowering, so we should be getting loquats soon. Or probably by summer we'll have loquats. Just a lot of different things. And we also do have down here poison oak. So we've got to be careful on that. Now right now it's died back. I don't see any green, but that's not to say it's not there. Because in the fall it usually goes very red and then it will just die back. So you don't want to really touch it. Some people are extremely allergic to it to the point where if their dog walks through it and they pet their dog, they can end up at the hospital. <laughs> and then some people aren't that allergic. So it's everybody's difference. You just have to be careful and be aware of what you're touching. It's got three leaves together. Don't touch it. That's the main thing. Hey, there's my garden up there. Now I've walked down the carry. So it's been a nice week. And Gary's been working on different videos, which is good. And then I've been working on different things. Like I said, I've been working on my ginger. I'm now gonna get my turmeric out. I wanna start figuring out what I want to keep and what I wanna plant. I think I'm gonna start some of that and put it in the house. And then as soon as the weather is warm, I will go ahead and get it outside. Gary's garden is so green and beautiful. Now his is fenced off from rabbits and different things. So he isn't fighting as much with the rabbits as much as I am. I had a big rabbit in my garden the other day. But you know, there is so much, so I don't worry about it. But that's what's going on in his garden. Isn't it beautiful? We could walk in there. But he's got all kinds of kale, different colored and kales growing. And of course his ponds are doing really, really well. And then his apple trees, hmm. You know, we'll have to see what happens if they'll flower in the spring and if we'll get apples. I guess there is one apple, a little, little apple. An apple's an apple. The deer can come through here and that's what happened last time. He was so excited because he had 40 apples and they all disappeared and he couldn't figure it out until he figured out it was a deer coming through. And I had done a video, I think, on the two deer that came through. I saw two of them. Well, they weren't just coming through. They were coming down to get his apples. Here is his papayas. And then he's got other ones around the property. And I've got a lot of different papayas growing. See, he left it, it's a big clump. And then it grew up here. And so he's got them all growing here. It's full of papayas. Oh, and look, he made a little thing up there for insects. He took a piece of wood and drilled holes. So native insects can hide in there. Let's go in the garden. Let's, yeah, let's go inside his garden. He doesn't even know I'm doing this. He's probably gonna walk in and, or he's gonna be looking for me. 
that's the way I do videos. A lot of times I have zero idea that I'm even going to do a video and something sparks in my head and I'll go running out the door with my camera and put something together. Very, very poor on planning videos. Mine is more spontaneous. You've seen his garden. I don't want to do a full garden tour. I just wanted to walk down here and look. And see, he doesn't pull this out for multiple reasons. This is sow thistle. First of all, if I make a green drink, this is absolutely edible. The other thing is, birds will feed off the flowers and then the seed heads, see the tiny seed heads? The goldfinches need that to survive. Oh, I have a visitor. I have a little hummingbird that's sitting right here. Please don't tell me the feeders are empty. I just filled all the feeders and that's what they do. They'll start to buzz me and bob, you know, like bomb my head. Now it could be only one feeder empty, but they do stuff like that. So if he's following me around, it could be that. But then Gary's got flowers down here. So he may have gone to eat already and he's coming down here to feed on the flowers. Isn't this beautiful? And he's got his tripods down here. So that's really good. So this way I know he is doing videos. Isn't that beautiful and green? Now when you don't have rabbits eating anything, then you have more growth. Look at this. This is a rhubarb. Oh, I know what I can do with this. I can make a beautiful cement bird bath out of it. If I had the time. Look at the size of that. Oh, wow. That is gorgeous. I've been wanting to do that. I'll have to do that one day and use one of those leaves. And of course, he's got the purple kale and everything else going. So everything's going really good. Isn't that gorgeous? I can hear the birds singing. That was a toey singing, that long song. I don't, Let's see if we can walk over here and you might be able to hear it. I hear toey singing. There's so many birds singing today and no people. I mean, usually I hear people, kids, just even everything travels here in the canyon. You can hear people from far away. That's a toey singing in the background. I don't hear any people. We have so much noise pollution. That's one thing that's really hard to get away from. No matter where you live, no matter how far you get out it, there's always noise pollution. So I can't get away from the plains. But at least it's, it is fairly quiet today. So I thought I'd just take you on a walk. Look at all those bananas. Isn't that amazing? Oh, the Nick Federoff show was on Things Green. They repeated our show. Oh, and Gary's picked so many bananas that I've been making banana shakes out of them, which is really good. And bananas, even with our oranges, just blend it up. And then a little milk, or you could use almond milk or whatever, and it was so good. And the rest I'm gonna freeze a lot. He's brought in like 100 bananas. And he's got more coming in soon too. Now this is all sweet potatoes. So I'm gonna have to start looking for some sweet potatoes. He's got a pool over there he must be working on. And then, of course, he's got all his different tuber plants he grows. So that's it. I just thought I would take a walk. So that's it. So we're working on different things. I hope to do a whole lot more on gardening and maybe even go someplace and grab a camera and take it with me to different gardens if I go somewhere. I just want to sit and listen. That's the hummingbird. And all the different birds singing. So that's it, I just thought I'd grab my camera, say hello to everybody. We're at the start of a new year. Want to plant a lot of seeds. I won't have to buy any basil this year because I've got basil growing, which is fantastic. Want to do some more cuttings on my pepinos and get more growing. I only have one plant growing in my garden. He's got a whole bunch. And figure out more things to do with it. Oh, I see a little wren down there. This is so beautiful. So I thought I would just say hello, take you with me on my morning walk. You know, I had such a workout. We walked miles, miles and miles uphill. And I thought the uphill was hard. Oh no, let me tell you something. When we went with the school, the downhill was harder. I didn't realize the downhill was really giving a burn in, sh in your shins. So I thought, well, since I had a real workout like that, I better start walking around more. And this way, I'm already got all my muscles going really good and I feel quite good. So I figured I'm just gonna grab my camera and take a walk. So I just wanted to say hello. Wish everybody again to have a wonderful 2020. 
in. I can't wait for the weather to warm up. If I knew it was going to stay this way, we were 40 this morning when I got up. We're probably about 50 right now. I'm in double layers of clothes. I would start to think about planting. I see squash seeds coming up in areas, but I know that if we're hit with a freeze or a cold, I'll lose it all. So I'm not quite ready to really get into the garden. Right now, the main thing I want to do is maintain what I've got. And as far as food, I've got plenty of greens. I've been using the colored leaves and making all kinds of fun things out of the tree colored leaves. And then of course I've got greens and make my green drink. I stir fry pizza. I put greens on our pizza, our homemade pizza now. Got a really good recipe to make bread. I had, we had the greatest sandwiches on that hiking trip. And I figured out a way to make my own bread now. No yeast, no rising, no nothing. So I'm, and, and just cooking up different things. So it's been really a lot of fun. So anyways, I thought I would just take you with me. Oh, let's walk over here and look at his Malabar spinach. Mine has all died back. Mine is on the deck. I don't have any in my garden, but I will hopefully this year. I didn't plant any in my garden. But his on the wall, actually they're both doing well. That one's doing really well. So it is warmer down here. See a little hummingbird up there? His is doing really well and then it's hugging the wall. Mine on my deck has died back completely. And I want to redo the deck a little tiny bit. There's different ideas I've got. I'm not sure if I'm going to layer it differently like I did or change things. Like I said, it's so wonderful when you garden. You know, when you garden, it's your garden. And you do it the way you want to do it. Eh, hummingbirds are waiting for me. And if you like it, then you leave it. If you don't like it, you change it. It's your garden. You've got to do it the way it's going to work for you. And that's what's very important. I, I don't put up videos to tell somebody what to do. I'm not going to say, oh, you have to dig a hole and you have to turn your compost or, or you don't turn. You know, if you like something I've done, but you want to do it differently, please do so. I, that's important because everybody, you get ideas from people, from everybody. You know, you'll watch something and you don't like the way they did it, but you figured out, wait a minute, I got a different way that's going to work for me. I think it's going to be better if I do it this way. And it's like some people don't like container gardening. I happen to like container gardening. I know this way it's not going to get waterlogged because it's going to drain out. You get good drainage on there. There's some people in areas where it's just raining too much and then they end up losing their plants because they're waterlogged. And if you have a container and it's above the ground, you don't have to worry about that. So that would be great. But if you don't want a container garden and Gary is straight into the ground, you can still compost in place. You just dig a hole. It doesn't have to be smack up against the plant. Dig a hole anywhere. I could dig a hole right here. And those plants are going to send their roots. Dig a hole, drop your kitchen scraps in it, and cover it. And it will do the same thing whether you're container gardening or composting in place in the ground. My whole idea is to make life easier. I'm going to have breakfast. I'm going to eat his broccoli. And this is the whole idea. If you make it easy and you make it fun, you will keep doing it. The moment something becomes a chore, you'll do it and do it. And then one day you'll say, oh, no, I can't do this anymore. Enough is enough. This way, you've got to make it fun and you've got to make it easy. Don't throw away. I will say that. Don't throw away kitchen scraps. That is gold. That's going to break down and bring microbes and everything. And it's the best plant food for your plants. You can't get anything better. I don't believe you can buy anything better. That's the best thing. You dig a hole and if you've got dogs, put something on top of it. It can be another container. It can be a stepping stone. It can be anything. But the thing is, get it in the ground and give it back to your plants and you're going to be amazed. Amazed how beautiful plants will grow with the decomposing plant matter and food matter that you'd pulled out of your own garden. And even if you bought it from the grocery store, don't worry if it was organic or not. It's going to break down. It's all going to disappear. If you ate it, it's not poisonous. So don't worry about it. Compost what you didn't eat. Compost what rotted. Compost what you forgot about in the refrigerator. You can pretty much compost almost everything and anything. I probably wouldn't put a jar of pickle juice in the ground because I wouldn't want that much salt but you could drain the pickle juice and wash the pickles off and throw them in. 
if you're in doubt on anything, you have trash pickup, throw it out. But anything that, it doesn't matter if you went to a fast food pickup joint and you had leftovers and you put it in the back, chow mein, whatever, and you forgot about it and you found it and you don't, can't even recognize it, that is food for your plants. Get it out into your garden. And like I said, either compost it in place in a container or put it in the ground, dig a hole, and the plant that's closest, all of these, and that's still close because it's amazing how far they send their roots, will will come to wherever you put it in the ground. So I hope I've given you some ideas. I am going to eat some, look at this. See, he doesn't have any insects on his at all. I have a few. But his is out in the open here. And what's happening is the birds, you'll see them, they'll dive down from the top and they're eating with stuff they can get to. So this is mine. This is my, I haven't had breakfast yet. So that's my breakfast. Oh, so good. I love it. So with that, have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. Interesting to know that I could disappear for a couple hours out of the house with a camera in hand. And Gary doesn't even go looking for me. I guess if I fell down a hill, he wouldn't look for me until dinner time. Especially tonight, I told him I was making pizza. So that's when he'll go looking for me. He's looking for me. He must be hungry.